the families of nearly two dozen young men who vanished and drowned have long suspected their son's deaths were no accident. Now I find out some college students have gone where police have not, putting many distant pieces together, uncovering a Midwest mystery that has them talking about a serial killer. Rather than sit at home, I may as well be out here looking, looking at faces. Stephanie Welzine's son, Brian, disappeared after ringing in the new year on the Gold Coast. She spent weeks passing out flyers and praying for a break. And hopefully he'll come back. More than two months later, Brian Welzine's body washed up on an Indiana beach. Investigators called the death accidental. Detectives believe Welzine wandered from the Ambassador East Hotel and fell into the lake two blocks away. He didn't have a coat on. Three years later, another family repeated the ritual here. Did somebody stop and pick him up? 23-year-old Glenn Ledley went missing after a party on Lakeshore Drive. His body also found in Lake Michigan. His death also ruled an accident. Could that have happened to us? Could that have happened to one of our friends? It's things that you consider. Amanda Pressinger and Jessica Clave are graduate students at St. Cloud State University near Minneapolis. No one has taken an in-depth look at it from, you know, all these cases. They wondered whether Welzine and Ludley's deaths fit a pattern. So they looked at more than 20 cases, all Midwest college students, last seen drinking at parties or bars, who all vanished and turned up drowned. Among them, Ryan Getz, Keith Noble, Eric Blair, Chris Jenkins, Michael Knoll, Josh Dimon, Chad Sharon, Jared Dion, Scott Radel, and Brian Schaefer. Here's an interesting one, too. The now, deaths all clustered along Interstate 94 from Minnesota to Ohio. The one city that has the most victims is La Crosse. Criminology professor Lee Gilbertson noticed the men almost always went missing in the first half of the month and only during the school year. A closer look at the map revealed a routine of sorts. There is a cycle in there, a chunk in there that's east, west, west, east, west, east that repeats itself twice. That doesn't sound like accident either. The data led students to suggest that it might be the work of a traveling businessman. But why? All these men were found dressed with their wallets, cash and keys, no signs of foul play. Professor Gilbertson has a theory. We think that something happened to the killer when he was 21, possibly when he was drinking. Perhaps the killer got lost, took a ride from a stranger, was molested, and now looks for victims that remind him of himself at that age. There's no way he's going to touch these people or do anything to them to harm them because that's what happened to him. So in a sickening twist, a killer may be drowning young men to protect them. In order to keep control of the situation and to release them unharmed and pristine, the only way he can be sure of that is to kill them. St. Cloud's police chief listened to the student's presentation last week, but he has his doubts, as do others, who see little more than a deadly chain of coincidences glued together by binge drinking, darkness, and hypothermia. There may be a serial killer out there. There may not. It, you still don't have a concrete conclusion. And Stephanie Welzine told me tonight she still believes her son's disappearance six years ago included or involved foul play. La Crosse, Wisconsin may be the best example of this debate. Seven college men have drowned there in recent years. The police chief thinks they stumbled or fell into the river. The chief's wife is convinced a serial killer did it.